Bob Odenkirk is coming in. But send hot dog in right now. Yeah, send hot dog in real quick. Send hot dog in now. Derek is here. Yeah. Send hot hot dog. All right. If you if you think that uh, your position is worth buying Derek Metallica tickets, that's a wise move. Good to know where your loyalties lie, hot dog. That was smart. You've attached yourself to a winning horse here. So he made a mistake. He took Derek's side over your, your instructions. Yeah, you did. There he is. Hey, come on in, hot dog. What mic is that? It's uh, Jim. No, the other one. Where's this Bob's mic? This one, five. Hot dog. All right. Hot dog, jump over there. All right. You ever uh, make a decision in a moment that you realize long term is probably not the smartest one in the world? A couple of times. Yeah. You feel like that happened today? I don't know. I'm running out of breath. I'm running around. Yeah. <sighs> Just did relax. You, did you buy Derek's Metallica tickets for him? No. I'm about to. I was about to. You were? Now he's not. Yeah. Why not? Because it's 10 hours. Because I'll tell you plenty of time. Fine. Hang, I gotta on, hang out there for a second. Let's bring Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk, come in. Hot Dog's a fan. I'm sorry. You like Bob Odenkirk, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Bob. Hey, buddy. How are What's you? Going oh, on? Good. Welcome. How are you? Who's Sam? I am. Hi, buddy. I like, the, I like hearing that. <laughs> I don't know uh, who anybody is anymore. It's a rotating host here. <laughs> yeah, it What's is. Your, That's Hot Dog. Nice to meet you. All right. <laughs> and this Why'd is... your mom and dad call you Hot Dog? They thought it was a Why would name. they name you after that? <laughs> My actual name's Shay, but I don't know why they call me Hot Dog here. You don't know? Mm. Why do they? I'm kind of curious <laughs> myself. <laughs> you know, know? what your parents do that? Do you have like a great grandfather named Hot Dog? <laughs> <laughs> Some, or maybe at Ellis Island, they change someone's name to Hot Dog. You're a Hot Dog. <laughs> it's a, it's a family name. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it. Some of the names from Mr. Show were from uh, Jay Johnson, uh, one of the writers. And his mom was a public school teacher, and, and she kind of would bring home these names, like Famous Mortimer was someone's name. Wow, really? Which we used, yeah, Famous Mortimer. So First there's somebody famous, who's an adult right now who, who has their name in yes. Mr. Show. That's great. Yes, and oh, Queen Ella and Snow Ella Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> these are real people. That's Hi, amazing. Hi, Queen Ella. Hi, Snow Ella. <laughs> You almost want to like uh, make sure people are aware of that, like as they're watching Mr. Show. Yeah. Like you don't understand. This is funnier and, than you could possibly and, imagine. And you <laughs> it's know, a real well, name. it's real. It's yeah. just life. It's uh, <laughs> life as lived in America. Hey, Male and Famale, you know, is is a common first name for families that didn't speak English and they thought the doctor had named their child. Oh yeah, male or Male well, and is, fla- Oh, Famale. Male and okay. female, but they 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 just were. The way it's explained to me is the the people were worried, you know, obviously they didn't speak English and they thought the doctor had chosen a name and they didn't want to argue. Right. So they wow. like they, they <laughs> right, we'll call that Male and Famale. <laughs> I guess we'll just go with the doctor then. Like, he seems to be a man of authority. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine, like, living that life where, like, you're so afraid of people in uniform? Yes. That, like, even a doctor is just like, no, the kid's going to be named yeah. Bale. I don't yeah. understand, but... Or okay. imagine the one who's like, well, my daughter's name is Hermaphrodite. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess well, baby will be the middle name. <laughs> you know, nicknames are cruel things. I'm sorry, hot dog. It's, it's not right. the worst. It's not the worst. It's not. Come no, on. hot dog's fine. not so bad. D bag is worse. <laughs> D bag is that, worse. Well, that's D bag. That would be Derek's <laughs> nickname. <laughs> oh my god. He's not in good spirits. No. Not in good spirits today. How do you change that? That becomes the challenge of your life. You lay awake at night, going, <laughs> "How do I? How do I Mike. do something? Oh, what if I just start eating hamburgers and he, I can become hamburger?" Yeah, <laughs> D-Bag isn't even necessarily the worst of my nicknames. What's, yeah. your, what's your least favorite nickname? I used to hate Sick Baby, but I've gotten yeah. used to it at this point. Aww. Sick uh, Baby. Sick, That's kind of a punk rock a thing, one. right? Sick yeah, Baby? Yeah, yeah, like, like I'm a Sick Baby. Yeah, you know? the lead singer Sick Baby. It was actually because he was premature and used to vomit a lot yeah. as an infant. Lot, he was sickly. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> he was a sickly infant. He really was so, a sick baby. He was a sickly how do you boy. guys know that? He told us. He... he bragged about it. Yeah. yeah. He was like, you guys may not know this, but when I was growing up... The was... only reason I'm here is because I survived. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> he really thought it was a, a tale of overcoming. Really? Four pounds? Yeah, yeah. 
Couldn't was, keep anything down? Nothing. Now you can't get it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, <it's> built <laughs> That's the best part of radio is you find out so much about, and the little things people like you're premature, it's like, oh, great, let's humiliate him. <laughs> yeah. so, whatever it is. You've... What nickname would you uh, do you aspire to? Yeah, maybe we could change your name. Like, what nickname champion? do you want? How yeah. about Champion. Champion's not bad. Yeah, it's, like a horse. Yeah, it's nice. It's, <laughs> but, but also kind of great. Strength, a, a good stock. Good yeah. Stock. <laughs> How about home when Metallica is playing? Yeah, that is going to be my new nickname. What's that? He's, he was trying to go to see Metallica. It's oh, yeah? Just not yeah I, he, was, uh, he was panicking while the show was on about buying Metallica what, tickets. How, well, I set him up uh, to, Do you still like Metallica? Me. Yeah, well, I'm, t I'm 25, so I mean, I... He's in the fan club. I wasn't necessarily... <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Kiss and, Army? <laughs> oh yeah, I never this was in the has. Kiss Army, even though I Neither loved Kiss. I, I never yeah, joined. I had neighbors who were in it, and uh, I I dodged that draft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you never joined the. Kiss I never Army. joined. I was a fan. I loved Kiss. Worshipped Kiss, but sure. I never joined the Kiss Army. And that's the first what band were you afraid I afraid could... of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With blue oyster gold. Yeah, I was a little, <laughs> I was a little fruity a pacifist. You know, I don't know why I didn't. I probably should have. I had should have, for sure. You should have gotten some, yeah, some certification, you know? Were you a KISS fan? What's boot camp up? like? No. Uh, <laughs> boot camp in the KISS army. Uh, no. I, uh, I, I like KISS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like them. But I think... Um, God, pop music is such a strange thing the way it gets to you because, like, I I had Boston's albums, and so I guess I like poppier, guitar-y kind of, I guess you could say softer, but no, I don't like soft. I, eventually, I was waiting for punk rock to happen, and I love The Replacements as my favorite band of all time. Do you know The Replacements? I know the name. I don't know a lot yeah. of the music. Yeah, that's my favorite band ever. Do you like The Ramones? I do. I do. Were they it gets they were a little after the Ramones, right? Huh? They were after the Ramones or before? No, they were after. They okay. were after. Yeah. So what? So that's and the it. Sex Pistols, I like a lot. Hilarious. Did they just have one album? Yeah, just one album. I mean, there's like an Odds and Eds album that they also put out called The Great Rock and Roll Swindle, which is some weird shit. I don't know where it came from, but I guess there's a movie I've never seen. But anyway, the Sex Pistols are hilarious and yeah. a blast. And uh, yeah, so but I I think. Kiss, actually, I liked later, just I came to appreciate them, you know, like what they did. The, right. the replacements do one Kiss song. Which one? Black Diamond. Black Diamond, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's they a great do one. it on their, like, fourth album. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, they used to close with that. That was their, that was yeah. their closing song. Was that's, awesome. a great, that's a great song. Yeah. How do they write these great songs, these guys? I think they were underrated sometimes because of the makeup and the stage show and the crazy tongue and the demon. I think sometimes some of the music was actually underrated and they were better than people gave like them credit those are, for. That's right. just a solid, great song. Yeah. And yeah. then what's... I, look, I know you hate it, but Beth... I love Beth. That was a but tremendous But the fact that hit. they could write that yeah. and commit to it... We Hard Rock amazing. Woman, Garth Brooks did uh, covered Hard Luck Woman. They yeah, did, he did great stuff. Yeah, I mean these are great songs. Yeah, Originally it was supposed to be Beck, though. You know. Oh, Gene Simmons tells that was supposed to be Beck. <laughs> Gene, Gene wait, Simmons wait. came in here and took full credit for Beth. Yeah. Even though it's a Peter Chris yeah, song. Yeah. Because he said that uh, Peter was dating somebody named Rebecca, and he wanted to do a Beck. What can I do? You know. Yeah. And Gene was like, No, no, no! You got to change it to Beth. And he goes, and it became a hit. Oh yeah. Didn't so Peter that's Chris the reason. Bullshit? Yeah. yeah he did. The band members tend to disagree on the history I of the band. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting though that you didn't have like you real after punk comes around you're like, "Oh, this is what it's like to have well, a favorite band." Well, I think band. Kiss seemed like too humorous to me. It was the makeup and all. Right. Too much. Right, too much you know, show. Right. I I actually couldn't hear the songs through all the makeup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, am I Am I dreaming of this, but was there a documentary about Kiss from a few years ago where Gene Simmons gets stuck in the, on the pulley, on the hydraulic lift? Do you, you know what I'm talking about? They're in no, Japan. I, I know what you mean, but I don't remember the documentary. It's like from like six years ago. It's not that long ago. And there's a scene, and I, I swear I saw this. I didn't dream this. He's up above the crowd in a large arena on a hydraulic wires and he uh yeah harness failure and it gets stuck yeah and he's That's he's so angry and he's, he's yelling yeah. get me down <laughs> get me down it's like a spinal tap <laughs> the moment. god of hellfire wants to get <laughs> yeah. down you better let him down so you fast forward to this is when he spits blood 
He's just stuck. Oh, yeah, yeah this he's is just great. Stuck. He's just stuck. Harness failure. Dizzle, you can turn the sound on over there on the iPad. The wow. thing is, look, see, get me down. See, the thing is, if you're stuck up there, I don't know what you yell, but you probably shouldn't yell, get me down. You should just... I don't and then they unhook him, out. yeah. And he would play uh, God of Thunder. Yeah, that's awesome though. Like the recovery is so hilarious. Like <laughs> it great. really strips the illusion it's away. So great. <laughs> He's not a demon at all. Oh man! He's an older... Oh yeah, he point. He, you see his fingers. He pointed down. They're cheering for him. But then he he's yeah, he yeah. just he's supposed to go straight <laughs> down. Yeah, he's, going, he's going right back up. Damn. God damn it, wrong button. Oh no. That's great. Someone got screamed at after that. That's so embarrassing when you have to stall for time. Yeah. On the roof. When you're on a harness with <laughs> blood in your mouth. How do you how do you do how does it I don't see how it all works that they can write these great songs that are really just nice, simple, and well done, and then that get into that kind of stuff. Well, they were, they were built to be a, a mega rock band. Like Paul right. Stanley says, that was our goal. Right. We wanted to be the biggest, loudest rock band in the world. They didn't, they didn't want it, you know, so the songwriting stuff was already there, but that was a goal. That didn't, they didn't just kind of accident up on yeah. that. That I, was really what they wanted. It's also one of those things when, it's like, you're cool. looking to get attention. Like, yeah. you know, because a lot of people can write great songs. They're looking to get attention. They create this thing, and now everybody's looking at them. But you're right. What ends up happening is you can't go back to being a good songwriter after that. Like yeah, you can't go be back very to being hard known to that. put out a, an acoustic, like a Nebraska album. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be great, though, if they did? How that did, would be... How they, they well, do? they did acoustic. They did... Uh, Unplugged? Unplugged. It was good. Oh, really? Yeah, they did a Kiss I might Unplugged. get that album. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> no, actually, I might really like that. It was good, yeah. Yeah. But they never were nearly as popular when they took off the makeup. No, I remember that moment. It was one of those things. That was kind Whatever. of Whatever. They tried stuff. Yeah, yeah they tried. And they went back to it. Yeah. What to. is this movie you're doing? Girlfriend's Day? Because I didn't I know. I made a movie called Girlfriend's Day that uh, one of the writers on Mr. Show, Eric Hoffman, wrote with a guy named Phil Zlotarinsky. Funny, funny script those two guys wrote. And uh, it always stuck with me over these years. It's It has no social value at all. It is not a commentary on anything there's no reason it needed to be made except it made me laugh every time I picked it up. And it's a noir film. It's like this crazy story where I play a greeting card writer who writes romance cards and hasn't written a good one in years since his wife left him. And uh, and then there's a new holiday called Girlfriend's Day and there's a murder and there's somebody they want the best card. Somebody's got to write a great card for it. And it's crazy but fun. And That's it's refreshing. on Netflix. That's refreshing. Like, just something that, well, I just thought this would be a cool movie, so yeah. then I made it. I just it. thought and it was funny, so I made it. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's the basic. I mean, you know, because over the years, I've written many screenplays, right? And you, you have a reason for each one, right? I really want to explore this, or I want to tell, share this personal thing, or... And then this silly thing just keeps popping up as, like, always making me laugh. You know what I mean? It's one of those ones once a year I'd pick it up and read it, and it would make me laugh. So Netflix is such a great place, and I am uh, I know people there. And for a low budget, we made this film, and, and I'm really proud of it. It's really fun. When you write a screenplay, you're like, okay, I want to do this thing on greeting cards. Do you immediately start writing shit down, or do you like just bounce it around for a while, or, or are you good at just sitting down and going, okay, here's where it's going to go? Well, I'm no good at the thing you're supposed to do, which is outlining the whole thing before you write a single word. I don't even understand how that would ever work. I've tried it a million times. Yeah. Because how do you know what happens in a—how do you know how the characters talk or what they do if you don't write a scene or two, you know, where you see them talking? And you feel the energy coming off their um, conversation or incident or whatever. So I kind of do both. I, I, I sit down and write a scene. If I, I just don't get precious about it. That's the key. It's just you see the scene to start your movie. Usually people have a great beginning, like a first thing. Yeah. Find a bag of money. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two kids find a bag of money. Uh, just write the scene. Don't get all, you know, precious about it. Write it out. And now you, and then set it aside, and then and then do your brainstorming, and see where that goes. But also try to pick up cues from what you write, like what the actual words they used, and how they talk to each other, and what the scene looked like, and what the vibe was. Try to, you know, that can then inspire where the story goes. I but 
look, I'm not a great screenwriter. I've written like probably 15 movies and only one has been made, this <laughs> little one. Um, although two others are good. Do you still have a whole hope for a couple of the other ones? Like, you know what? Uh, I think that's got potential. Or do you look back? Yeah, that was kind of shitty. Yeah. There's one, an adaptation of a book, a novel, the fuck up by Arthur Nersesian, a great, great New York novel. And it's the best thing I've ever written probably at all. And it's an adaptation. Right. But I, I, uh, I messed around with the story, um, a bit. And it's it's the best thing I've written, but I don't know if it'd ever get made. It's kind of set in the '80s, and that's hard. When you, they always want movies set now. Stranger Things on Netflix that was big from uh, set in the '80s. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great series. But uh, anyway, yeah, I've written, and I'm keep writing them and is it easier to get stuff? at all easier to get things made now sure. after breaking bad because that was that kind of mainstream yeah thing. well i mean it's because it's international yeah. it's because there's some value to it in europe and australia and latin america that i it would make it easier for me to make something that i'm in because that this show breaking bad and better call Saul have played around the world it's amazing it's really blows my mind because I was always a cult, um, you know, fan base. And yeah. I, I was fine with that. I loved Mr. Show fans and the alternative comedy scene fans that knew me and knew my work. And I used to feel have that feeling. I don't know, Jim, if you have this same experience of like, if I was in a fairly large room of people, I could like point to the people and say, that guy knows me, she knows me, those two people, you know, just from how they yes. looked and their age. And yes. And now it's more widespread because these shows play to everyone. Right. Uh, you, 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 I was going to ask you too, like, do you ever sit back and realize like, well, I was, you were in part of one of the most respected shows ever done. I mean, Breaking Bad really is it, it, it critically other actors. I mean, fucking Hopkins said about Cranston, it was the best acting he'd ever seen. Like it, it's right. it's respected like on the level of the of the Sopranos and a few other shows that yeah. that most people just never get. It's um yeah, but so when you think about that kind of thing, you do think that it it is that that achievement is out of your hands. You know, all you can ever do is your best work and kind of push yourself as hard as you can. But also, with what we do, whether it's a movie or a TV show, it kind of has to come together and the audience has to find it. And there's magic and luck involved. And, um, you know, when you hear the writers from Breaking Bad talk about the experience of writing it, they always say, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what it would be. We, we weren't sure. We had a general idea. I mean, sometimes I doubt. I, I don't believe these guys, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, you know, because, like, how could you not know? I just shot a scene in Better Call Saul, and there's no spoiler alert here because I won't be specific, but there's this little item that I find. It, it's in the ceiling of a room. <laughs> it's it's a scene from, like, years before the, the episode of the story's main events takes place, and it is an item that exists inside of a shoebox in the first scene of Better Call Saul in my closet. I open the closet, there's a shoebox, and there's this one item in there that they don't even acknowledge, but it's there. You can see it out of the corner of your eye. And then here we are in the third season, almost the end, and there's a flashback to a scene where we see what's inside that thing that even I was like, wait, did the only... Who's going to notice? It's amazing. It's, it's like a, amazing. a maze almost. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. And it just comes from the writers contemplating their work, looking at the story, looking at every element, what people are wearing, what's around them, just the li littlest things in the in the world and and finding meaning in them and and bringing it out when it's time. They're not even in a rush to do any of this stuff. It's it's Thinking on a level that is um, a little bit scary and maybe, uh, look, I could never do it. I, 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 We worked hard on our scenes on Mr. Show, right? right. And we beat him up and stuff. But at a certain point of the comedy scene, it's funny or not, let's move on, right? But these guys really sit in that room and contemplate uh, the story. And, and, and Bob is talking about, of course, uh, Better Call Saul. Season 3 premieres. April 10th, 10 o'clock on AMC. And, but right now, Girlfriend's Day, 
which uh, you wrote and directed. Yeah, I did not direct oh, you didn't it. Direct uh, it. Uh, Michael Paul Stevenson, who directed two documentaries, one called Best Worst Movie. You ever hear of it? No. Well, Michael w- was a child actor, and he was in a movie called Troll 2. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a terrible, it's not terrible. Good. It's horrible. You ever seen but, a hot dog? I haven't seen it. You're not talking to no. You got two mics next to you. I haven't seen it, but it sounds bad. Troll okay. two, yeah. and and he made a documentary when he grew up about <laughs> about the making of that movie and the people who made it. He went back and interviewed them, and it's really great. Yeah, there's Troll two. Isn't there's it more the... interesting to see a documentary about a shitty movie? Yeah, yeah. like The Island of Doctor Moreau. Yeah, I don't want to see a documentary about The Godfather. I want to see how The Island of Doctor Moreau or, or Troll right. two. That's much more interesting, right. especially when the expectations are high. Yeah. And it turns into a piece of shit. Is that like, the troll? Yeah, Ew. that's scary. It's not good. You don't think so? No. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's horrible. Let's and he made a, a documentary about that. And then he made another one called American Scream. And I, we just got to know each other from these movies that I saw of his. And uh, he directed a, did an amazing job of directing Girlfriend's Day on Netflix starting yesterday and forever. So watch it whenever you feel like it. Don't you love that about Netflix is you can just it's go out so and go, go watch it Look, now. We made a little movie, Jim. It's, some people are going to get it the first time they watch it. Some people at 3 a.m. one night, they can't sleep. They're going to press play and they're going to get it and they're going to love it. You know, it's a kind of quirky thing. But the fact that it just sits up there, you can go to it when you're ready, <laughs> when you feel like it, it's the greatest thing ever. 93 million people have Netflix. You know, small movies, to get an audience, in the end, you people work so hard to get like their opening weekend, to get re- good reviews. Or, but in the end, you just want people to be able to see your stuff. Yeah. Mr. Show, when it ended, we couldn't get it put out on DVD. We couldn't get it in video stores. It was just gone and for years. And and that hurts more than anything, more than getting paid, whatever. You'd like to get paid for your sure. work. But just that people can see it after you make it. So being up on Netflix is great. I'm thrilled. And no matter what you do, you can promote it. Like you promote, oh yeah, it's on Netflix now. And yeah, if you just, like it, you can promote it for years if you want. Yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock Saturday, there's too much with, with, with other networks. Netflix is just the easiest. Does, yeah. does working with the Breaking Bad people and the Better Call Saul people, does that like influence you as a writer yeah, where you're like, I sure. need more nuanced shit in my... Yeah, it, in does. My... it does. It makes you... It, it gets you close to really great writing and the kind of... It, it, what it always makes me do is when I... When I write, you know, I, again, I'm a sketch comedy guy, and that's something that I'm a little hyper, and I just want to get to the funny idea and then make the most out of it and run away. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys, calm down, slow down, pay attention, listen to the characters, notice the scene, what's ca- what's happening here. They think on a deeper level, and potentially... It will help me be a better writer myself. Do you but, ever compare yourself and like your own mind fall short? Like Jesus Christ, look what these guys oh, do. Yeah. And look Different what I do. Oh yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. Not only that, it's not just that the quality of their writing is that they they place a lot of trust in the audience. And you know, as comics, and I'm not on the level of you, Jim, where you can go in front of a club uh, crowd and battle with them for their attentions and well, I stuff. have to. They want their money back. <laughs> right. Well, I, I can't do that. You know, I mean, I've never come close to that. And I re- really respect that uh, courage <laughs> and talent. Uh, Did you never do stand-up? Yeah, but when it, I literally got hired at Saturday Night Live as a writer the day before I was supposed to go on the road uh, in the Midwest as an opener. Oh, okay. So I was doing stand-up during the boom and making a little bit of money as everybody could. You could all, everybody could make 20 bucks a show and right. two shows a night or three and do like, you know, there was discos had comedy night on a Monday. Yeah. You could make 20 bucks on a Monday night. So uh, I was doing that while I was waiting tables and I was just about to go do my first week. Uh, you probably know the booker. He was a Midwest booker back when we were both starting. I imagine we're about the same age. Uh, Anyway, I didn't go because I got hired at Saturday Night Live as a writer. So I never, look, I I would have never succeeded in that world. It's just too goddamn hard. And with an audience, for me, I'm kind of like, oh, you're not liking this? Oh, well, I'll leave then. 
you don't have to listen to me. It's okay. <laughs> Go watch somebody else. It's all right. I never felt that fight right. that, that real comics have to feel. You know how many comics, and you're probably one of them, who love to tell stories about how they walked a room. You know, you know, only if it's genuine. Some guys get caught in the trap of they admire Bill Hicks, who was doing that with political stuff or whatever it was he was saying, and they think that it's cool to walk them on purpose, only if it's a real walk. Like, you don't want to isolate them on purpose and just go, boy, Christians are cunts, and then look at a woman with a crucifix and hope she walks. Yeah. Some people walk them because they're really doing their act, and people just fucking, those stories I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of them are that other story, and that's kind of the amazing thing to me is that that vibe of, like, I'm not winning these guys over. Some of them are leaving. Fuck them. I'm going to fucking stand up here and I'm going to say the worst shit I can say. And I'm going to love this. I'm going to walk this room. And you know, we. That's once you're bombing. Yeah, then you're like, we're all, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that once you're bombing, you're like, all right, we all get a new shower. But that this kind one. of yeah. toughness, that's amazing to me. I don't have that. I, I don't have that. What were we talking about? I don't know. We were talking about something. Um, stand up. Yeah, I never got that far into it. Well, we got to uh, we got to let you. Yeah, do your they're next telling interview. us in your ear that you have other stuff. I love Bob. Well, thanks Odenkirk. for having me on, guys. Girlfriend's Day is a fun movie, and I hope you like it. It's and on Netflix right now. Right now, Better Call Saul, April tenth. Going to be a good three. third season. Gus is coming back. Oh, that's going to be good. Yeah. Oh, and others, and others. Really? Yeah. It's great.